few days been like, but mine's been crazy. First, I was doing all this work, and I was working along, and cruising, and snoozing, and just flowing, and going. And man, it was like too cool. I was getting so much done, and I was having fun, and kind of amazed at how much I was able to accomplish. And I was kind of like, well, you know, you know what it's like. You're getting work done, and you're just working. You know, you're working it. You know, you. You feel good about it, you know, you kind of feel good, and then all of a sudden, you kind of go along and you suddenly go, pum, 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 pum. kind of like, you know, when a car is driving along and suddenly it stutters because it's running out of gas. It's kind of what happened in the middle of my day, you know. I was cruising along. I had my eyes on the road. I was focused. I was doing those things that I'm supposed to do. But you know, the funny thing was, is that I got busted. <laughs> My car didn't stutter. It was the red lights going off and the sirens that were behind me. When I looked in the rearview mirror, guess what? The Holy Ghost had pulled me over. <laughs> yep, I got busted. Sure enough, God kind of went, hold on here. And he yanked back his presence and took away his spirit. And I went, you know, Lord. In the middle of the day, I said this to him, too, which is really funny, because you would think that someone is old as I am, I know that. But I was going, you know, Lord, it just doesn't feel right. I don't I don't know what's wrong, but something ain't right. You know, something's wrong here. It just, just isn't going smooth. So then I, of course, you know, pushed on and pressed on, because we press on to the mark. You know, the high calling of Jesus Christ. You know, we're going to get her done. <laughs> when everyone else fails, call on Michael. He'll do it all. You know, so sure enough, I was pressing on and getting ready to do what seemed like my last video, which who knows, you know, with me. So I pull up my utmost, you know, and I get ready to kind of decide to hang in there for one more video to just get it done and then I'll figure it out. Sure enough, first thing it says is worshiping the work. What? Lord. Not me. I don't get caught up in work. I'm not on a work strip. <laughs> I busted. <laughs> I got busted big time. I just read it and I went, yeah, okay. <laughs> you got me. And then I felt good, you know, because it was like, God watched me, you know, like in my hamster cage, just, you know, purring along on a Monday, you know, just rolling along on the river, you know, just acting like a little hamster in that cage, you know, just spinning that little wheel, thinking I'm getting so much done for God. You know, and I'm kind of like, you know, kind of, on the one hand, thrilled, because I'm going, yeah, part of me is going, ooh, cool, you know, for the Lord, you know, and all this stuff, and the other part of me is going, but Lord, where are you? I just don't feel like you're with me. Are, are you making me wait on something? Am I sin in my life? Is there something wrong? Is our relationship off, you know? So half of me is, you know, kind of like trying to figure this out. The other half is going, well, we'll just keep going. <laughs> so if you ever think that, you know, just because men and women of God teach something that they've got it down, uh-uh, we're all learning. We're on a even keel. None of us are perfect. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And until that day that we appear before Him, glorious in His sight, we're all going to be failures and we're all going to be failing at times. Now, I'll admit, it's a kind of perspective thing. You know, like maybe your failing is kind of like falling flat on your face, you know, and like devastating, you know, everyone around you. And maybe my falling on my face is just kind of like busting up my nose. <laughs> but either way, everybody falls on their face sooner or later. You know, you kind of get tripped up, you know, and stumble and fall, you know, and you lose your equilibrium, you know, and you kind of hit the ground and you go, whoa, what happened? What am I doing down here? And you get up, clean yourself up. God says, well, you stumbled. So, <laughs> welcome to the real world. And, you know, that's why we treat each other with grace and mercy, because everyone is going to stumble. Everyone is going to fail. Everyone will fall. At different times, it comes as a shock to some people. But for me personally, you know, every time I hear some minister or some pastor or some elder or even some human being, no matter who they are, failing or falling, I just kind of smile and go, <laughs> no one bites the dust. <laughs> Welcome to the rest of us. <laughs> We're all sinners saved by grace.
know, I think humanity would probably have more of an impact, or Christianity would have more of an impact, if we all relaxed a little more, you know, about the very fact that we are sinners, you know. That yes, we are screwed up, you know, and you've got some screw-ups, and she's got some screw-ups, and he's got some screw-ups, and I got some screw-ups. And you know what? We carry them around just like baggage and scars, you know. They don't seem to be looking real obvious until we suddenly stumble over them, and there's all our baggage, you know, just spilled out all over the street, you know, and then you start packing it back up, putting it back inside the luggage, you know, and then start carrying it again. Or you ask God to take it away, and sometimes he does, and sometimes you take it back. It's the way it is. But you know, there's always a better way, and the best way is just to admit it when we sin. When we failed somehow, when we've fallen short of what God would have us to do, and even in your day, you know, it can be as simple as just not really spending the time that you should have, you know, like maybe in the morning. Maybe, maybe you did this this morning. Maybe you got up and you were in a hurry and you were late for work and you ran off without talking to the Lord. You kind of said, well, I'll catch it on the radio, you know, so you flipped on your K-Love or you put on your earbuds, you know, and you kind of caught a quick word, you know kind of dashed off and rashed off and kind of analyzed and adapted to the day, you know. Then suddenly, long about noon or some other point in time, you realized, I just don't feel right. Imagine how God feels. You see, we take for granted often our relationship with God when we have one. <laughs> First of all, you have to have one in order to take it for granted. <laughs> if you don't have one, guess what? It doesn't apply. But... A lot of times people take for granted the fact that God is the one who is really maintaining the relationship because we often fail and fumble and stumble and kind of, you know, make the mistake of running off without spending the time with God that we should. Or if you're just perfectly religious and you do it every day, maybe you're so religious that you're not listening to God you know, every day. You know. Pardon me, but you know, that can also be a stumbling block when you're dogmatic about it. He says, look, I'm over here at the coffee shop and you're still back at home, you know, doing your Bible study. <laughs> uh, I wanted you at the coffee shop. I was going to meet you there. Didn't you get the message? The memo? You know, I sent you one. <laughs> you know, but that's how God works sometimes. He doesn't want us to be robotic. He wants us to be interpersonal, to be relating to one another, to be relating to Him to be led by the Spirit of God as the Spirit lives inside of us. So for me today, you know, I blew it. You know, I just kind of, about midday, I realized that things were wrong and I couldn't figure it out until finally today I got a hold of the end of my day, my utmost, and sure enough, as I started to read it, by golly, God was talking to me and telling me exactly who it was for. Me. <laughs> so maybe you're like me today and maybe you're not. Maybe you're doing fine and Maybe you're going to find this will warn you about tomorrow. or Either way, you'll just figure out that this is obviously me today. The worship of the work. Laborers together with God. 1 Corinthians 3.9 Beware of any work for God which enables you to evade concentration on Him. A great many Christian workers worship their work. The one concern of a worker should be concentration on Jesus. And this will mean that all the other margins of life, the mental, the moral, and the spiritual, are free with the freedom of a child, a worshiping child, not a wayward child. A worker without this solemn, dominant note of concentration on Jesus is apt to get his work wrapped around his neck. <laughs> there is no margin of body, mind, or spirit free. As a matter of fact, they look like they're burdened down, frustrated, and about ready to hit the ground, don't they? They look tired, bummed out, and frustrated to the point of aggravated at the least insightful things that happen to them. They have no robust life coming out of them, no light, no peace, no love, no joy. Or if they do, so little that you really wonder, huh, you're a Christian? Huh, wow, imagine that. <laughs> But the other side is just as true. When once the concentration is on God, then all the margins of life are free and under the dominance of Jesus himself. In other words, the spirit, the soul, the body, the mind, all of them are focused and kept in balance by God himself. For he is our strength. He's our sustenance. He's the one who allows us to keep it all from proper perspective. 
when we keep our focus on Him. The freedom after sanctification is the freedom of a child. The things that used to keep the light pinned down are gone. But be careful to remember that you are freed from one thing only, and that's to be absolutely devoted to Jesus, to be completely committed to Him, to be so devoted that you are in love always with Him and not the work. We have no right to judge where we should be put or to have preconceived notions as to which God is fitting us for. He is the one who is making us, not we making ourselves. God engineers everything. Wherever He puts us, our great aim is to pour out a wholehearted devotion to Him in that particular work, no matter what it is. We give our all to the one who gave His all for us. So wherever God has you, whatever God does with you, wherever God puts you, that's where He wants you. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. You know, I love that because on the one hand, God busted me for not focusing in on Him, but on the other hand, blessed me for all the work that I do because it is always in love with Him. Sure, there may be times where I get distracted and attracted by what I'm doing and kind of lose lose my mind, so to speak, for a few minutes, but then God always reminds me and draws me back with just that tenderness, that gentleness of His Spirit, that, that wonder of God that comes alive in you and says, Oh, you want to be with me, so you feel me now. You're aware that I have feelings and that I was kind of like miffed or felt hurt that you weren't spending time with me, but you were spending time for me. And you know, I love that about my relationship with God because God always calls to me with tenderness, with loving kindness. He always reaches out to me with gentleness. He doesn't come at me and busts me and breaks me down and says what a lousy person you are or how stupid you were to do your dumbest thing that you did. But rather, He always brings me to that place of, Oh, Lord, wow, I'm sorry. And then His Spirit comes in and just whoosh, and I just feel refreshed and born anew. And you know, that's what we should always be. In everything that we do and say and be, we should always be walking in that spirit of newness, that spirit of life, that spirit of God that makes us one with our Father, one with His Son, and one in the things that He wants us to do, not the things we want to have done for Him. You see, it's always going to be a focus in on Jesus. And if we could just keep our minds focused in on that, then I don't think we'd ever be making the same mistake that I made today. So I pray for you that you'll always begin your day with God and end your day with God and in the between times when you feel the pressure coming, remember that He loves you and He promises to stay, that He's always going to lead you throughout your day, that He will walk with you, that He will talk with you, that He will bless you. Whether you see it or not, it's debatable. But He will bless you, not only in a blessing, but with Himself, if you really want to focus in on just Him.